Hi everyone, my name is Sarita V. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to be adjusting a uh, rayon dress that I bought. It's a really pretty shirt dress, kind of has a 1940s vibe, but we're going to bring it back a little bit more to the 1940s with a few adjustments. And one of those are going to be uh, well fitted. Uh, I've already adjusted it a little bit. I've worn it to work a few times, but I still didn't feel super comfortable in it. So that's the reason we're going to be doing some more alterations. So the first thing that I did was, uh, and I'll show you the picture, is that it came in very, very long. I do not do well with long dresses, midi length. Uh, even right below my knee, sometimes I feel like it is just a little bit too long. Sometimes I need it at my knee or uh, just right above the knee. And I haven't figured out what the recipe is. It seems like if I'm wearing straighter skirts, then those will uh, look great right below my knee. But if I'm wearing something that's a little bit more flared, I do like a little tiny bit more, a uh, little bit shorter. So right now this hem falls right below my knee. I'll try it on for you guys so you can see. And then uh, where I'm having an issue is uh, that it's still a little bit too big in the chest, uh, mostly under the arms and in the chest. And then the last thing are there's these straps that need to go. So I do not, do not, do not like straps, <laughs> like uh, either straps that you tie in the front or even like cardigans or like those robes or bathrobes that you kind of tie in the front. I think they look really frumpy. If they tie in the back, I feel like they look really juvenile. So uh, I do like things cinched at the waist and even if it's like poofy on the top or poofy on the bottom, having a belt to cinch things in looks really, really nice. So there's somewhere a happy medium for me and I think that for me it's just wearing belts and they look nice and tailored and you know, they don't look juvenile, they look grown up and so that's what we're gonna do today. One thing that I, um, I, I like finding these dresses because um, they're, the rayon are easier to find sometimes than the cotton ones, but especially in the 80s and 90s, they did a lot of like 40 style reproduction. You know, you had really broad shoulders, you had these really great shirt dresses, they were a little bit longer, so then you can bring it up to whatever height you want. But you can search on like eBay or Etsy, 100% uh, rayon dress, and it, you can even look for length like below the knee or long or midi and you get a whole bunch of options and then uh, it just makes it a lot easier to find them. And one thing I like about the 80s and 90s dresses is that they don't use pastels so much. I mean, there are still pastels, but I can usually find jewel tones or darker colors, which I prefer because it, they just look better on my complexion. So I encourage you to check out some older dresses. I think this one I thought was uh, much older, but now that I look at the tag, it's uh, by Erica and it looks like a kind of a modern tag, but um, you know what? I don't care because I am going to deck this thing out 1940s style. So I ended up having, um, this here was the section that I cut off the bottom. So you can see that it was quite long. And this is what I'm going to use the fabric belt for. And I think that will look really nice. So and I've got plenty of it. So we're gonna do that. We're going to remove um, these straps here. So those need to go. I don't need to look like I'm a six year old. And then um, over here, uh, it's got this really nice pleating here, like right in the bust area, which is so pretty. So I kind of want to leave that or make it even more ruffled, um, bringing this in. You can tell that um, this mannequin's fitted for me. If you haven't seen that video, uh, check it out. Right here, there's about two inches extra worth of fabric in the armpit. And I need to kind of look at some other shirts and see how tight they come in. Um, in that area in order to be able to move my arms with a woven fabric. This doesn't have any stretch. So I'm gonna check that out and see how close they get to my bust. Make sure I have enough ease in there to move my arms. So um, the rest of it from here to here fits really quite well. Um, you can tell there's no gapping in the buttons or gaping. And it also comes with pockets and I know everybody wants to have pockets but 
Seriously, that's what you have purses for. I don't know if I'm going to keep the pockets. Um, what I don't like is that they actually gape and they, they're not very flattering. So I might close those in and take those out just so that they're nice and smooth. And let's just be real, like my, if I put my phone in there, it's going to like end up like pulling down on the dress. And this is a really lightweight rayon. It's not like uh, <laughs> uh, dungarees or something. So uh, we're going to do that. And the rest of it, this here, all looks great. It's got this princess seam. And one thing I noticed about this is that it's just a little bit further off the apex. Like, I feel like maybe it should come in here. So maybe I'll adjust that first, uh, which might correctly adjust this. So looks like I need to go try this on. Okay, so I started this dress in July and I got really, really sick. Literally, like while I was working on the shoulders or the sleeves, I ended up with a fever. My husband and I both had a uh, bacterial infection that causes pneumonia and we were both out for at least three weeks. I'm still, I feel like I'm still recovering. Of course, you get so behind on everything and then you try and catch up and it's like two months to recover for something like that. So. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't the big C that's going around, so we're glad that it was just, uh, you know, just normal pneumonia going around. <laughs> but, you know, you gotta love it. So, the very first step I did on this dress was to hem it about eight inches. So it was a midi length, and I brought it up to knee length. So I, I hemmed it up, I wore it to work, it was fine, but I still felt like it was really frumpy. So I am taking that extra fabric. So I am making the belt out of that. Now it's not a straight piece of fabric. It's made up of lots of different pieces, like all panels all put together. It's a busy enough pattern. You won't really see the seams when it gets all folded up. So uh, that's okay. When I measured out the belt, I took my waist measurement, which is about 31, 32 inches. Then I added an inch and a half to wrap around the belt buckle and secure the belt buckle in place. Then I added a couple of extra inches so I could have, you know, it go to, you know, somewhere between my my belly button and my side. So I wanted to come somewhere in between there. So I added a few inches for that. And then I also uh, made sure that there was enough room for seam allowance for the end, both ends of the belt. So that's how I figured out how long it was going to be. I um, chose a pink rose gold belt. Uh, belt loop that I got from Etsy and I just like the color because it matched the flowers and it I didn't want like silver or gold I thought about maybe covering it but this color was so pretty so I decided to go with that and if you're looking for belt buckles it took me a little while to find them Etsy has some really has a really good selection I also find vintage belt buckles where people will you know the belts aren't any good anymore so the, you know, or you can't, sometimes you can't sell belts on eBay or Etsy, like they just never go. So I know a lot of sellers will just take the buckles and people will buy those and then make whatever they want with those. So, and it's also cheaper for shipping. So um, I looked through all my belt buckles, but I didn't see anything that I liked. And so I decided to go with the rose gold. Once I picked out the belt buckle, I knew exactly how wide to make my belt. So in this case, uh, it was one inch and then I added about, um, about a half an inch extra for seam allowance to each side of the belt. Then I measured the buck ram, so I did uh, one inch thick on the buck ram. I really wish I would have done um, a couple of layers. I only did one layer, but that did not add enough thickness for what I wanted, but that's okay. It's good as it is, but I can make it better the next time. So then I um, sewed one edge of the buck ram to one edge of the belt. Uh, aside and uh, that just secured it in place. Then I ironed it and then I folded it and kind of stretched it out a little bit so it'd be nice and snug. And then I folded the edge, uh, the seam allowance on the edge. So uh, basically uh, I ended up making, like encasing it completely and then I I know some people make really great belts and they spend a lot of time hand stitching and making beautiful things. I did not want to do that. So I ended up um, taking that folded over edge, 
uh, putting it right up against the edge and then I top stitched that. And just so I could match it on the other side, I top stitched the bottom side of the belt as well. And I thought it looked really good. Uh, then I folded over and wrapped it around the uh, buckle and secured that in place. Next, I needed to make some a belt loop. And so I just measured out, just eyeballed a piece of fabric, made a small little tube and hand stitched that in place around the belt. And that was perfect, that was all I needed. And then and that actually slides, uh, slides around, so. And then I ended up um, putting in the grommets. Uh, I used the sewing machine setting to do the grommets and it, it was okay, it, it's doable, but I will probably buy grommets in the future because it didn't come out perfect. And I think it can be better. So I ended up uh, puncturing the fabric with a little uh, puncture thing that I inherited. I have no idea what it's called. Uh, leave it in the comments if you know what it is. <laughs> and uh, at this point, I don't really care because it, it does what I need it to do, so. Okay, so on the dress, reworking some of the other features and changing the shape of it just a little bit, I ended up, um, this area was too big, so I um, ended up taking in about a half an inch here, and then I also added a dart right back here, if I can find it, back here, just to take in some of that extra fabric that was making me feel really bulky, and that really helped. It also just lined the dress up better, so it felt um, my shoulders came to a good spot. Um, it wasn't drooping off the shoulder. The, the next two things was removing things off the dress just to make it sleeker and more comfortable. I seam ripped the side and I removed the, um, the straps that used to be like the belt tie. So I removed those because I made my own belt. And then I also ended up uh, removing the pockets. So I just stitched along the side and then cut the pockets out. Didn't really do anything too fancy with that. Um, it still has a little tiny bit of interfacing in the seams, but it's not a big deal at all. And I really like it. And I'm sorry if if you are on the pocket bandwagon, which I, I pants and shorts should have pockets. Some dresses should, but this fabric is just too light to have pockets. It was gaping and it was just really unattractive. So um, that's what purses are for, you know? Or husbands, significant others or, you know donkeys or whatever you bring along with you. Once I uh, removed the belt, uh, little straps and the pocket, then I uh, undid the stitching in the arm and I sewed about an inch from the armpit, you know, the edge of the sleeve down the armpit, through the side, through the belt loops, and then through the pockets. And that made it all very, very nice, uh, trimmed it up, fits way better uh, now. And then I still had some puffiness in the back. So the way that I decided to solve that without like completely destroying the back uh, was to add some elastic to the back just to kind of gather it in. It kind of makes it like a whole bunch of little darts. So it's much more flattering. So I just picked a piece of elastic and kind of pinned it in place and then sewed it while stretching it. And then um, it all cinched up and looks way better. did not cap the sleeves. I'm still thinking about it, so I might do that in the future, but I do like how a lot of the 1940s uh, tops have uh, kind of longer, more modest sleeves, and I just think that, um, you know, they don't have like the best toned arms, so, you know, the longer sleeve is, uh, is nice. Uh, a little bit more uh, coverage there. Um, I love the top. It's just so beautiful. The belt turned out really nicely, so hindsight, 
I think I would have um, done like two or three layers of buckram. I only did one. It is not very uh, sturdy, but it's good enough. I really like the rose color on the belt. I think that's really pretty with the little pink flowers on here. And um, yeah, I, I, I think bringing it in um, with that little bit of extra dart here through the shoulders and through the back made a big difference. And then adding the elastic kind of cinches it in so it's a little bit more flattering and adjusts um, based on, you know, what I eat or whatever. It'll fit. It'll fit. So, um, I was planning on hemming it, but like I said, you know, being sick, you just kind of do whatever. Um, it's good right now. It's right below my knee and that's good. I might still bring it up. I'll wear it for a few weeks and decide if I still want to bring that up, but it's good as it is and yeah all together the one thing I didn't show you that I did that I did off camera and this was uh, kind of when I was sick like I maybe a day or two later my fever broke and then I came back and I decided to be dedicated to the cause and keep working on my dress so uh, what I ended up doing was um, they have these r really interesting little oval buttons and they must have measured for the length of the button not the width and all the buttons would just pop off. Uh, they'd just open and pop up because the holes were too loose. So what I ended up doing was just putting like a little tiny stitch, uh, reinforce the buttonholes to make them smaller. And that actually solved, uh, solved the issue. So there's no more buttonholes just opening up whenever they want to. So, uh, cause that makes a very bad work dress. Well, I guess it depends on what your profession is, so. Uh, anyway, uh, I work in an office for the state, so I don't think they'd appreciate that. Um, yeah. Another thing that I did um, off camera was I ended up uh, hand stitching this area of the um, dress. It was just because I brought in the seam here. I needed to um, finish up that hem. So I rehemmed that and I did the same on the side. I think this dress cost, I think $20 on eBay or Etsy. eBay. So uh, I'm happy with it and you know, I'm glad that I was able to finish it with a few extra <laughs> weeks of summer is still around, it's still hot, so having a nice cool rayon dress will be lovely uh, for the warm days. But I totally imagine this being a great dress to wear during the fall and wear it with sweaters, cardigans, um, even a jacket would look really nice with this. So I imagine uh, this cute little collar coming out over just a solid, you know, cardigan, pink cardigan maybe. Ooh, pink cropped cardigan. That would be pretty cute. I don't have one of those yet though. If you like vintage fashion, pinup photography, or even vintage home and housewares, uh, find me on Instagram at, or Facebook at Sarita V Pinup and